What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, this is gonna be a continuation from the previous video that I put out, which was the only tools you require to start woodworking. So that is hand tool woodworking and the absolute bare minimum essential tools that you need to get into this hobby. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. I'll link that up here now. And in this video, what we're gonna do is take some of those tools and we're gonna square and flatten and trew up some stock. So I have some spotted beach that's been drying up on my rack there for a few months. It's good and dry now. I want to, I want to make a box with it, um, a nice dovetail box using only hand tools. So I've been taking some of the boards and I've been turning them into square and true stock. So we're going to take one of these boards in this video and we're going to get it square and true and into a usable piece of stock so that we can begin our project with. So let's do it. Okay, so the tools we are going to use to do this is going to be very, very simple and very basic. So starting off, a pencil. We want a square, a marking gauge, a Ryoba saw, which is what I'm going to be using because it's a rip saw and cross cut saw all in one. Now, if you happen to have a Western style rip saw and cross cut saw, perfect, that'll do the job as well. And I'm going to be using my low angled jack plane because in the previous video, I said if you could only have one plane and you could only ever afford one plane, then a low angled jack plane is the one to go for. So we're going to use this to flatten, to square and true up a board. And the boards, like I said, we're gonna be using is some of this spotted beach. I've already done one already. So we have a nice flat, square and true box. Both our surfaces are parallel, both our edges are parallel and everything is square and true. And that's important because we need reference faces to mark anything out. We can't dimension anything, we can't mark anything out unless we have square stock and we can reference from a face side and a face edge. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll take one of these boards and let's get on it. Okay, now that we are secure on the top of our bench, we need to get a completely flat face side. So we're just gonna start removing stock and we're gonna remove a good bit of it. Like I say, we're gonna be using a low angle jack plane to do all of this. I mean, if you had scrub planes and other jack planes, high angle planes, whatever, you can use them too. But the whole premise is just to use as few tools as possible. Just to show as that follow on from the last video that you only really need a couple of tools to enjoy your woodworking. So there's humps, hollows, I can feel them here with my hand. It's high in the middle, it's lower on the sides. I've got dips here. So we're gonna start removing some stock from the center of this board first, just try and get it flat. And I'm gonna go across the grain. So I'm gonna go at the width of the board just to get some of that material off quickly rather than going the length of the board. We will go the length of the board now in a second, but like I say, I just wanna get some of this stock off fairly fast. So let's get doing it. I just want to feel in that that high point is coming down. I can still see I'm shiny in the center now. I can see the rough parts outside, so I'm dipping off either end. So I'm just going to keep working down that center. And then we can work out the edges, and then we can go lengthways on the board. Okay, we're getting that center down so the board is starting to flatten out there. So we've taken our high point down and we can just constantly check with the sole of our plane. The edge of our plane here will give us a nice straight edge reference. So we can still see we're rocking corner to corner. So we're on the center here, it's still a little bit high, but it's a lot lower than what it was. So we get that down a small bit more and then we can start moving lengthways up the board to get this nice and flat. Right, now that the center high point is taken down, I'm gonna start moving up the board now to get this nice and flat. So I can use the whole sole of my plane along the length of the board to make sure that this gets nice and flat. And going across the grain allows you to remove a lot of stock quickly. Now hopefully when you're buying rough cut timber, it will not be in as bad a shape as this. This is all over the place, just because I did such a terrible job cutting this on the bandsaw. So we'll still get it flat and it's still a good um, little test piece to show you how to square and true stock. And I'm already out of breath and starting to sweat. So let's get on with it. So I'm just gonna go up and down the board now. Just moving from left to right. I'm keeping the plane relatively straight. I will, when I'm coming to the end, kind of angle the plane just to reference the entire surface of the board. 
Now, when you do angle your plane slightly, you're changing the angle of that blade, how it attacks the timber. So that's one thing to um, bear in mind. I'm not gonna get into that now, we'll do that in a later video. But just remember, by skewing your plane, you're changing the angle of your blade. So, spray it up and down. And I'm just moving over and back. You can begin to feel it with our hand. Your hand is actually pretty sensitive to humps and hollows and bumps. So we're getting pretty flat there now. So we can just start to check across with our plane, bring it all the way down. And we can see that we're high in the middle. So we we'll walk the middle a little bit more. Okay, we're getting there now. So we can just check along our board again, check where our hoist points are. And uh, we can just mark them with a pencil. So we're not too bad at the top. We're slightly high about here. So we continue back and just keep checking. Again, along where this kind of knot part is, I'm slightly high. So I can see the plane is rocking on that. So we take that down a small bit. Back here, slightly high. I have a high point down this way. So that's where we're high. We're rocking on this point the whole way down. So we're gonna just take that out of it now and check again. And we work it slowly because we're almost there. Okay, we are almost there and I am starting to really sweat now. So you don't need to go to a gym when you're preparing stock. Just get down, get a few boards, flatten them with a hand plane and that's our gym work done for today. So I still have a slightly high point but it's kind of from the length of the board. So if I'm going straight up and down on that, I'm referencing that high point the whole way, which I don't want to do because the whole sole of the plane is sitting on an even high point the whole way along. So I'm just gonna attack it from side to side again. Just to remove that bit in the middle. So like I say, the plane is not riding the whole length of the high point. It is uh, able to reference the low points and the high points by attacking it from this direction. And that should almost be there, I'd say. About perfect. So, small little bit of touch up here. And we're just there. So I just like to skew the plane slightly when I'm uh, finishing it off, just so I'm referencing the entire width of the board, almost corner to corner. It's a small board, so um, it's not that difficult. Okay, we're looking good. We're nice and flat the whole way along that face. More flat from end to end and side to side, which is good. And if you're doing a slightly longer board and you want to make yourself a set of winding sticks, again, it's just a nice way to check and see what way the board is twisted. So I can see that I'm perfect along there. Now it's a small board, so you don't need winding sticks for a small board. The plane will tell you everything you need to know. But if you were on a longer board and you wanted to just make sure that you're taking the twist out of it, you can see if you're high on this side or high on this side, then you know you can need to work that back down. So they're just a good little way of uh, checking for twist. Now, that's good and flat. We're gonna mark that face side. And that's our face side established. So now that our face side is established and everything is perfectly flat, there's no twist. We are front to back flat and side to side flat. Happy days, we can now reference from this. So what I wanna do now is establish a face edge that's at perfectly 90 degrees to our face side. And the fact that we have some live edges on this, I'm actually just gonna take the rip saw to it now and rip this board down either side. It doesn't have to be accurate, it doesn't have to be straight because we're gonna be planing it straight. But I just wanna take the bulk of this material off because I don't fancy planing down through all that. It is unbelievably hot today and uh, yeah, I'm already losing buckets of water making this. So. Just give me a rough straight line, that's all I want. Just something to follow with the saw. Doesn't have to be perfect. Same on this side, just roughly past the lowest point, which is about there. Roughly straight, just kind of eyeball it as straight as you can. We chop this now with the rib saw. Okay, let's rip the two sides of this, not in two, just chop straight down through it. Again, with the Ryoba saw, it has a rip saw side, which is the bigger teeth, so they have bigger guides for clearing that material, so you can rip straight down through boards. And I've picked the hottest day of the year to make this video. Probably not my best idea, but let's get on it. Let's do the same on the other side.
Okay, so that's both our sides ripped now. So we can establish a face edge. I'm gonna pick one of these for to be our face edge and whatever one we like the look of most. I like there's more detail on this side. So we're gonna call this our face edge and we will reference our face edge off our face side. So now this has to be perfectly at 90 degrees to our face side. So that's what we're gonna establish. So let's get on it and sweat some more. Okay, so there we are on our voice, and if we look at this, you can see how much we have to flatten here. So, big high point here. So we start working this down. We shorten down the square now, so we want to constantly check and make sure that we're keeping this perfectly square to our face side. So let's get on it. We're getting very close now, so we can just check with our hand plane again. You can see I've only a low spot here, so I'm gonna keep working from here to here, take this down, get it all even, and then we'll take full strokes along the entire length. Okay, we are perfectly flat along there now, which is good. Now we need to make sure that we're at 90 degrees. Okay, now we wanna make sure that we're, this is exactly 90 degrees to this. We're just gonna get our square and work our way along and look for any gaps either in here or up here. And, well, I just happened to plane it exactly 90 degrees, so I must be getting good at this. But if you had a gap, in the top up here, you would be slightly high on this side, and if you had a gap in the corner down here, you would be slightly high on this edge. And all you do is just read your gap all the way along, mark your high points with your pencil, take them down with a couple of strokes, check again, and then give one long full stroke, and you will get an exact 90 degree face edge, which will be exactly 90 degrees to your face side. And once those two are established, we can get the rest of the board true and square. Right, I went and got a quick glass of water and a towel, so let's get back at it. So now that we have established a face side and a face edge that's exactly 90 degrees to our face side, we want to establish an opposite face or an opposite edge, which is exactly parallel to our face edge. We can now do that with our marking gauge, so I'll show you how. Right, so the next thing, like I say, we're gonna do is establish a perfectly parallel edge to our face edge. And what we're gonna do is take our marking gauge, run it down our face edge, find the narrowest point of our board and set our marking gauge just below that, which is right about there. So I think this is the narrowest point of our board. So we've, we're wide, wider here and wider down here. It narrows in the middle. So right about there is the narrowest point. So I'm gonna set it just below that, tighten everything down and then scribe a line. Now this will give me a line which is perfectly parallel to my face edge the whole way down my board. Right, so I've just filled in my line with a pencil line. So if it's ever hard to see your marking line, just run your pencil in your marking gauge line, you'll be able to see it a bit better. The sun keeps going in and out in this workshop, so it's hard to fill them at times, but hopefully this is coming out on camera. So this line now is perfectly parallel to my face edge. So I'm gonna put this back in the voice now and work down to this line, checking that I'm staying 90 degrees to my face side. So it's gonna be very similar to what we've done here, except we're gonna to work to this line now, take our time. When we get close to the line, start making sure that you're 90 degrees to your face and we'll get there nice and easy. Let's do it. So looking along it, I can see that I have a lot more material to take off on this side than I do down here. So we'll work this side first till we even everything up and then we'll take long strokes, the length of our piece. So, and also we wanna make sure that we're checking then that we're staying at 90 degrees to our face. Just keep checking as we go. So we're getting quite close there now. So we can start lengthening out them strokes. Okay, we're almost square, so let's remove it all the way down to our line now. We're nearly there. And as you get close to your line, you'll feel those little bits 
we start to break off right where our marking gauge scored the fibers. So we're about one or two strokes away now from hitting on our line and we're just about perfectly square. Right, now that we've burned a hell of a lot of calories, we've established a face side, a face edge, and a perfectly parallel edge to that face edge. And the reason we have to go about it like this is we can't just establish our face side, flip our board over, and establish an opposite side. You will have two flat faces, but they will not be parallel to each other. It will be a wedge-shaped board. So in order to counteract that, we have to do it this way. So establish our face side, get a perfectly 90 degree face edge, establish a perfectly parallel edge that is also 90 degrees to your face. Now we can flip the board over and we can establish a face measuring with our marker or with our marking gauge off our two edges. We can make this now perfectly parallel to this. So let's do that. Okay, so just like before, I have set the marking gauge to the thinnest part of the board, which is right here at this corner. So I'm just below that. So now what I'm gonna do is from my face side, put my marking gauge up against that, and I'm gonna pull a line all the way down. Just like that. You can go light at first. Just make sure that marking gauge stays tight to that face. Because that's our reference face. And then you can go a little bit deeper on the next few strokes. So just like that. Now we're gonna flip the board over and we're gonna pull a line from our face side again down this side. So you can see, I'm gonna have a hell of a lot of material to remove here, but uh, that's okay. It's all a workout at the end of the day. So pull that line down there too. Again, go a little bit deeper. Now, this line and this line are perfectly parallel. Now, if I work this face down to this line on this side and down to this line on this side, making sure that I stay flat all the way across, that will give me a perfectly parallel face to here. So I've got a lot of material to remove there now. So let's get planing. Right, so I clamped to the top of our bench and I can see I have a good half an inch to take off here on this side of the board. It's a good 12 millimeters. So let that be a lesson to myself. Don't cut your board so crooked, so you have to spend hours hand planing them. And I do like hand tool woodworking. I could just take this to the planer or the joint or do it in five minutes, but where's the fun in that? So let's get planing this. And again, I'm gonna go across the grain because I wanna take this down pretty quickly. So I wanna remove a lot of material from this side and then we can start working the board just like we did before. So let's get on it. Extend that blade slightly. Now, if you do want to remove a lot of material from a board quickly, there is things like scrub planes. Why am I not using a scrub plane right now? Well, the whole point of this is to use as few tools as possible. Just like the last video where I said, these are all the tools you need to do woodworking. A jack plane, a low angle black jack plane will do everything. So we're going to use a low angle jack plane to do everything. So, put my money where my mouth is and let's get on it. Okay, so we are down to our line on both sides and I'm just checking all the way across to make sure that we're good and flat. So again, use your plane, it's a good straight edge and you can reference your entire board. And as long as you're sitting on the line on this side, sitting on the line on this side and everything is flat, you know that you're good and there's no twists or anything to worry about. So that is more or less perfect. I'm more than happy with that. Tiniest little bit of light coming through maybe there. Smallest little high point, but you know what? For hand tool woodworking, that is almost perfect. So, we won't complain too much about that. So there we go, we've just established a side now that's, or a face that's perfectly parallel to our face side. So, there we go, we have two parallel faces, two parallel edges. Now we just need to sort out the ends of our board and we have a perfectly square piece of stock. So, we can now use our square, square two lines and cut these boards. Now I have two split ends on this board that I need to get off. It's pretty, in drying out, even though I painted the ends of the boards, they still split a bit. It can't happen when you're drying timber. So we need to remove these at the splits. Now, for our entire project, as soon as we establish our face side and our face edge, we always want to reference them. Nothing else, they all always go against our fence. We always reference every marking gauge, every bit of squaring we have to do will always be referenced off the face side or the face edge. So I'm gonna square two lines down now off my face edge, 
just like that. And then at the end of this split, which is right about here, I'm also going to reference off the face edge and draw a line. Now I'm going to take my crosscut saw or the other side of my Ryobi saw, which is a crosscut saw, we'll cut this down and then we'll take it to the shooting board to make sure it's perfectly square. So we'll stay just outside our line. We don't have to be perfectly straight with our cut because we're going to true it up with the plane. Let's do that. So I'm just going to cut straight down just outside my line. Like I say, you don't have to be um, too precise with this. Just don't cross over your line and you'll be good. Same on this side. Right, now that we've flushed off two of our sides, we need to square up these edges and we're going to do that on the shooting board. And this is where the low angle jack plane comes in handy because it can plane end grain nice and easy without much tear out. So the more careful you are with your saw when it comes to this, the less work you're going to have to do now. But if you mess it up and you don't get a straight saw cut, don't beat yourself up over it. You can true everything up with a bit of elbow grease on your shooting board. So we want to make sure that we keep our face edge always against our fence. So when I'm planing this side, it's against the fence and I'm going to flip it this way to plane this side. I'm not going to flip it around or any other way. It's always going to be face edge against the fence. So let's get planing. Right, that's pretty good. Now we can be guaranteed that this edge is exactly 90 degrees to our face edge. When we built this jig, and I have a full video series on how to build all these woodworking jigs, I will link them right here now if you want to check out to make yourself a shooting board. It takes half an hour and you'll have this together. And there's a bunch of other jigs in that video as well. So this fence is exactly 90 degrees to this line here. That's what our plane runs along. So if we keep our face edge to that, we ensure that now that this is exactly 90 degrees. And we're also 90 degrees this way from our top to the sole of our plane. So now we know that this is exactly 90 degrees as well. So it's only a case of flip this around now, make sure that we always keep our face edge against our fence. There we go, all finished up. We now have a square and true piece of stock. So we have parallel edge, parallel edge, parallel face, a parallel face, and our ends are square as well. So now we can start working and dimensioning this and planning out a project with it. It's a good, usable piece of stock. Everything is square and true, and we have good reference faces for our marking lines. So you can see now that our sides are perfectly, and you see, square to our edges. We are square here. Can you guys see that? Am I getting on camera? Square here, square here, square here, square here. Faces are square, edges are square, everything is parallel. Same thickness all around, and it's all completely done with hand tools, use of a shooting board. So we just literally use the low angle jack plane, a Ryoba saw, and a square, and a marking gauge. And here we have a perfectly usable piece of stock from a really rough piece of lumber. So there we go. Right, there we go, one square and true piece of stock using only hand tools. Now this is a follow on from the last video that I did, which was the basic set of tools that you need to start woodworking. And it is a very basic set of tools, not that expensive, so you can get into it and start hand tool woodworking if that's what you wanna do. So I just wanted to do a quick video showing using very few tools how we get the square and true stock. So that's the reason we use the jack plane the whole way through this video, in case you're wondering why. So that's how you do it guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, hopefully you've made it this far in the video if you have think about giving it a thumbs up that really helps me out a lot for all the sweat and now a handful of blisters i have as well give it a thumbs up and if you're new here subscribe there's loads of videos like this coming up i've loads of videos on woodworking jigs nice simple ones to build literally half an hour to put most of these together i will link that here right now if you want to see how to make the shooting board bench hooks 45 degree jigs mitre jigs mitre box jigs everything you need to do so there you go Square and true piece of stock using only a small few hand tools. Now we can get on and build a box out of this. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.